Welcome to my David Wilson Out and About YouTube channel. Well, this morning I'm back out on the River Medway. I've just put in at Town Lock in Tunbridge and I'm paddling upstream. I'm aiming towards Tunbridge Slipway, but just before I reach that, once I've gone under the main bridge in the town, I'll be chucking a left, doing a clockwise uh, circuit, but taking in live flood barrier en route. The live flood barrier is actually, uh, the stretch up to the live flood barrier is about a mile long and it's very picturesque, very quiet, just a few fishermen, hopefully just me. So um, once we get through this town bit, we should be leaving the noise behind us and it should be a, a nice chilled out paddle. Anyway, I'll turn the camera forward and uh, let you see the view as I pass through the town. Excuse the noise, uh, we are actually passing right through the main town here and as you can see ahead, there's the bridge and that's um, Tunbridge High Street. Once we've gone past that, on the right you will actually see Tunbridge Castle, which is uh, quite a picturesque ruin. On the right you may already be able to see the footpath or the railings and the wall of a castle. As we come under this bridge just to the right there is another platform. I'm not sure if you're allowed to use it for kayaks but uh, it's a good height for it but then I'm not sure about parking for it so the suggested place to put in is Tunbridge Slipway. And there's the castle wall to your right. Another 100 yards, 100 meters, and uh, we should be in a peace and quiet. Well, as you can see, we're slowly leaving the town behind bridge in the background. Absolutely beautiful day today. I put in the water around about 8 a.m. That's a late start for me actually because it was sunny from the moment I got up at 6 a.m. Morning. Right, here's the fork in the river. So if you, if you go to the right here, upstream, about 100 meters up on the right is Tunbridge Slipway, which is the official start of the non-tidal Medway Canoe Trail. And we're forking left, as I said, going clockwise. What you can do, you can go left here, and go completely in a circle, come back to the slip. Well, we'll be forking off to the left, a bit further up under an iron railway bridge, and then doing the mile or so stretch up to Live flood barrier. On the return journey from the flood barrier, we'll come down back under the iron bridge and we'll fork left, and that would complete the circle, taking us back to the slipway. That's where I'm intending to stop for lunch. An awful lot of gnats about this morning, or mozzies, on the river. I have um, more or less swapped out my winter kit for my summer kit now, so I've got a spare set of clothing, quick dry track pants and um, quick dry polo shirt, towel. That's about all the spare clothes I've brought, to be honest. I don't really need a lot more. It's probably round about 18 or 19 degrees and I said it's not even 9am yet so 
quite warm and I've got me my bug spray oh, my Avon skin so soft for the mozzies and suntan cream yay we're coming into summer I don't know if you can make it out on the camera but I'm literally flying through swarms of mozzies and there's lots of uh, flies skipping along the surface of the water now absolutely amazing what a couple of weeks the change a couple of weeks can make and the last time out it was cold damp threatening to rain and now it's very warm already a bit of a gentle breeze but uh, very warm and everything's in bloom Tunbridge Scout headquarters to the left. They've got their own canoes and their own platform there. Have a look at it. And I just slowed down to look into the brambles on the right. There was loads of uh, birds in there. couple of sparrows, couple of finches and I'm on the lookout for kingfishers which I've probably got more chance of seeing once I fork left towards Lye Sluice As I said uh, earlier, this is a circular paddle until I fork off around Tunbridge Racecourse soil. I, I know it is Tunbridge Sports Ground and that's on the right hand side. So this is actually my preferred paddle for when I get a new kayak. Although the last time I came here, uh, they drained the river. So I was literally walking along the riverbed, which was a bit weird. So I had to take this kayak, the Ranger 1, out on another section of the river to test it out. As I just said, this is a, a particularly good place for novices, or indeed anyone with a, a new kayak they just want to test out for the first time, to put in the water and um, just check it out. The banks on the right, which are circling the sports ground, can be a bit high in places. But the main thing with this is there's always people on that path. There's joggers, runners, dog walkers. So, you know, if you're in the water and in trouble, I mean, someone's going to pass you every 30 seconds. I mean, it's uh, quite a busy old sports ground. Plus, you've got the added bonus that uh, on this section there is no cruisers, narrowboats or, or anything like that you literally are just, uh, they're mainly uh, unpowered craft as in uh, sups and kayaks the river is actually absolutely alive with birds, there's just hundreds of birds flying around it's, it's beautiful really miss this in the winter well as you can see on the left there's a uh, if you live on boards along here and I've come down to this circuit many times over the past four years just for a quick paddle and a chill out and none of these have moved 
Well, this is the last time out on the water during the week for a while, as after three years off of my own choice, I'm uh, back to work on Monday. And that's gonna feel very, very strange. However, the new job is a completely new start for me. It's a, a new career. I'll be working for the NHS Trust, whereas uh, a lot of my life, I've been a gas engineer, self-employed gas engineer and ex-British gas, but um, I've decided over the time off that uh, I don't want to do it anymore. It's not a matter of money. It's a matter of trying to do a job where you, that you enjoy and uh, feel that it's a worthwhile job. And that job wasn't cutting it for me. It was all about money. Well, there you go, ahead is the iron bridge. I was talking about it's an iron railway bridge. Um, so if you fork right here, you're carrying on, well, you know, fork right here, you're still on the clockwise circuit, which will take you back to the Tunbridge slipway. And then if you go past that and straight down, back to town lock. Uh, as I said, we're gonna fork left and take the beautiful stretch of water up to Lice Loose. So what can you hear in the background now? I'm just gonna paddle down. Take 15 seconds, 20 seconds, just gliding along. Doesn't that sound wonderful? The only thing you've got to watch out for on this uh, stretch, I call it straight edge, you can see it is uh, bendy, but it, I mean, basically it's not going around in circles. But um, the only thing you've got to watch out for on this stretch is anglers on the left hand bank you don't tend to get them on the right side and obviously as you know anglers do not tend to wear bright orange with eight mil orange lines in the water they're very very difficult to spot so i would suggest if you do this stretch up to the sluice to stay over on the right hand side as much as you can it'll save you snagging uh, fishing lines and having arguments with <laughs> the anglers. There's a little tributary there. I think um, on the way back we'll investigate that. Tributary on the right hand side. I don't know if you see that as we passed it. So I take a little mooch down there. There's a couple of tributaries off of here and I've been tempted to do them before but I've always been in my 16 foot glider. My full drop stitch kayak and they're very narrow I think the last time I was on here there was a few trees down and lots of debris in the water and I just couldn't 
I looked at it and I thought, you know, I, I can't turn around if I go down them. So uh, I've not tried it. But now I'm in a 10 or 10 and a half, 11 foot single person kayak, which turns on a sixpence, to be honest. I think I might give it a go. I was just trying to work out when I was last on this stretch. And I think it was June in 2020 when we came out the first lockdown. And my son and one of my grandsons were in my uh, Blue Wave glider, full drop stitch. And I took my granddaughter out on my, in my Itwit 3. And we paddled up to here. It was about 30 odd degrees. It was beautiful day in fact torturing day on the water uh, beautiful all the same so it's a few years a lot of finches about but as yet no kingfishers but on this stretch you've got a good chance because this is such a quiet stretch having no motor vessels just fishermen and a few kayakers and uh, paddle boarders but there's a very, very good chance. We've got high banks, a lot of bramble. There's a very good chance I'm gonna see a kingfisher. I don't know about you through the camera, but I should be able to see one sooner or later. I don't know what the fascination is with them. They're just, I don't know. They're, they're just so pretty, but so fast. I'm loving the bird song. This is such a stunning stretch of water. There's another reason you don't get motorized vessels up here. I may not need to duck, but uh, that is very low. Although it does look like it. No, I'm not sure. I thought it might be an openable bridge, but it's not. As I mentioned uh, slightly earlier, uh, back to work. New job on Monday. Shift patterns. Five days out of seven. Um, first three weeks are initial training and that so I've got to get my head down and uh, study and then after that I'm not sure how the shifts go whether it may be that my shifts work out that I work some weekends and obviously get the weekdays off which in all fairness suits me more than it would uh, a man with family and young children or whatever but um that would suit me down to the ground because then I can get out and do my outdoor activities during the week when there's less people about. Simple as. So taking into account I'm going to be working, what do I envisage? I'll be recording in the near future. That's a difficult one because I don't know my shift pattern. Uh, and obviously I've just got to find my feet in the new job. Um, however, either way, I believe to start with, I work every other Saturday and I may be getting every Monday off of that week. Again, that's to be confirmed. Um, so I see no reason why well, I've got two days off on the trot, say the Sunday and the Monday, why I can't get out for at least localish walks um, paddles like this uh, not necessary right on my doorstep like this it's only 22 miles away but um, as long as it doesn't take more than a day and maybe even a few kayak wild camps sort of you know slung in the mix obviously I've still got annual leave so what I intend doing as I live on my own 
I've only got a cat to look after and I can get that looked after. Um, I still will be getting away, doing some wild camping and some extra sort of hikes, long, longer hikes. I want to get down to Dartmoor and I'm not too sure about Scotland this year. It's, uh, if you've looked at, if you used to my channel or often visit my channel, you'll know I spent something like 17 days on the trot in Scotland last year and five extra days in Cumbria. Um, that's not going to be achievable, obviously. So what I may do this year is stick to the Devon area, sort of Dartmoor. I could get a couple of uh, nights out on the moors. I thoroughly enjoyed that last year when I went down there with my old, uh, my old mate, Barnsley Rob. So, yes, I'm still intending to keep the channel active and uh, upload as often as I can. It is even possible, because I've not been to work for three years, and obviously we've had the COVID, which I couldn't go far on that. I've not really gone all out on the channel anyway. So it could be possible that I'll still be uploading the same amount of content, be it not so far away from home. But then again, I live in an absolutely stunning county, the county of Kent, uh, bordering East Sussex. We've got, we got some lovely places down here. Um, Hampshire, I went down to Barley Mow on the uh, last year paddled a section of the Basingstoke Canal. I've got plans to go back down there. That's a, that's a day. That's a day and back. Be it a long day because it is uh, quite a drive. But uh, it's all achievable, you know. Certainly would like to get a few overnight kayak camping trips in. So don't despair if you're a follower of the channel. I'm not sort of just leaving it dormant and cracking on my work. My leisure time is very, very important to me. I'm not just going to laze around because I've got days off. Morning. Hiya. Is that not... Can't go down there very far then? Uh, the tree. I might. It's usually a few tree branches, but it's, 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 it's deep enough. It's oh, lovely. I'll try that on the way back. I think it's time to take a quick drink of water. I've brought lunch with me, as usual. Um, sandwich, and I've got a flask of ground coffee. And plenty of water, because it is getting warmer now so it's uh, very important to keep hydrated I can already see a bit of a current now and it, the nearer you get to the sluice the more you sort of feel it that you just have to pedal that bit harder and you soon know when you're getting near it because it uh, and you do tend to have to start putting a bit of work in right let's have that drop of water I'm really glad I come out today. All right, let's crack on. So, what have I got planned next? Well, in training for Monday for three weeks, so I know I've got Saturdays and Sundays off. So, unfortunately, I've got to join the crowds. The only thing about me. <laughs> is I'm an early bird and at this time of year it's light very early so um, what I'm intending to do this is it's Friday today Saturday week I'm intending to get back out on this river put in at Tunbridge Slip go down through um, Eldridge's Lock down to the next one which I believe is Porters and then on to East Lock so I want to do a recce 
for some wild camping. I'm not going to wild camp, but I'm going to do from the official start of the Midway Canoe Trail, travel down three locks. I may try, which I haven't done yet with this particular craft, this Ranger One, I may put a three and a half inch skeg on and run the chutes, run the uh, canoe passes, if I can. I mean, I'm not so saying it might even get snagged with a three and a half inch skeg, but I'll try it. Obviously coming back up stream, you've, you've got to portage, you've got to carry it. The thing with me is I do like to get in early and, and the good thing about Saturday, you think Saturday would be an extremely busy day out on the water. But if you can get in at sort of 6, 6.30 in the morning, I've just seen a finch and you're not going to say, oh, sorry, finch, a kingfisher and the camera's facing the wrong way. Anyway, if you can get out the water at, on the water at 6 a.m., then um, you'll be unlikely to see anybody other than diehards <laughs> till about 10 30 11 in the morning so by that time i probably would have already got down to the third lock and uh be not having lunch but having a sort of a brunch and then turning back so it is possible because i don't i just struggle with crowds i don't dislike people i just like peace and quiet but i'm hoping that the saturdays i'll be able to get away with it obviously until the school holidays then you you're just uh, you're lumbered then but uh, anyway so that should be Saturday week so look out for that video there is more coming I can hear road noise ahead of me now I can't I'm trying to think of the name of the actual road is one of the A roads and that's very near the sluice so uh, not too far to go now Oh yeah, you're right. I can hear the sluice and it's just come into view now. It looks like, it's, well, it, it normally, in its normal state, it's just the middle gate partly open. So, you know, regulating the actual flow of water. So, although Tunbridge Slipway is the official start of the Medway Canoe Trail, you can still paddle upstream as far as Lie Flood Barrier or Lie Sluice, as it's known, either or either. However, you cannot put in up here, there's just nowhere to launch. So, that's why uh, they've made the slipway the official start. As you can see it's a big old structure and I was wrong we've actually got the side gates open as well so uh, I'm having to paddle quite hard now it's very exposed here as well so you do get quite a lot of wind I'll get up as near as I can quite impressed that this kayak is actually getting that near without making it too difficult to paddle and pushing me back as you can see you got signs everywhere danger strong current so I'm not going to get too near that'll do me It's an awesome structure. I remember the first time I see it and I was absolutely shocked. There's the uh, A road, just about uh, 50 meters, 100 meters, I'm not sure. So I'll have to gauge the distance. There 
there you go, lice loose. Well, I started getting drawn in towards the sluice when I was trying to walk some settings on the camera. But um, you see, to be able to fight your way so far towards it, and then you take your eye off the game, it starts to actually suck you in. It's quite a strange feeling, but uh, no big problem. Really nice to do this stretch again. I've got a few friends that say to me, you know, don't you get bored, you know, and obviously I'm not always out on the Medway. And I've, in the last year, I've done a lot of things, uh, kayaking on locks, locks in Scotland and Coniston Water, Basingstoke Canal. And, uh, this is my local river. And if you just want to chill out, you just get on it. Why not? The thing with all rivers, or most rivers and, and canals, is uh, they do change by the season. And um, until this year, I don't think I'd ever kayaked in proper winter. I've gone sometimes into late autumn, but the weather had still been fairly good. I obviously had to wrap up a little bit, but it wasn't raining or whatever, so you know I got away with it. But this year I did uh, quite a bit of winter kayaking. Of course, you see the river on in a completely different perspective. Okay, yeah, it's barren, it's bare, but it's still got its own beauty. So, and obviously now it's coming into full bloom. It's completely different again. Spring's the same. You just you start seeing things come into life. Summer, you've got it. It's all overgrown, and it's actually, you know, at its best. Well, actually, isn't it at its best? I believe autumn. The only problem with autumn is it leads into winter. But autumn's absolutely magical. The colours, you know, the oranges and the browns are absolutely superb. But as I said, unfortunately, you know when you get that and you've got about a three week window, you're coming into winter. But uh, So, a lot of the time when I'm out paddling, it looks different because I'm going out in different seasons. And I just go out to enjoy myself. I just really chill out doing this bit of exercise, lots of fresh air, and uh, I also enjoy videoing and producing the videos, I hope you do. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to paddle a bit further back, and then I'm going to try going a little way down, probably lose my bottle. Some of these are uh, tributaries on the right and left hand side, but as you heard that kayaker say, when I asked him, you can go down a, a way, but there's lots of trees down, debris in the water. And at the end of the day, I am in an inflatable kayak, <laughs> which is not as tough as my full drop stitch kayak. Slowly leaving the traffic noise behind me and the noise from the sluice. It's, do you know what? It's getting really warm now. I mean, I'm, I'm not paddling hard. I'm absolutely roasting. I've just uh, off camera stopped and just put a bit of uh, spray on. So factor 50. It's uh, an absolute must this time of year. Even if it's cloudy, but that sun gets through, it'll absolutely molly you. I'm freckled. I've got what I call Scottish skin. I am from Scotland originally. And uh, I burn at the sight of sun. The other thing to remember is I've sprayed my arms, not sprayed my face because I've got my hat on, I've sprayed my neck because obviously I'm uh, follically challenged. I'm now bald. But I've got uh, quick dry track pants on, but my ankles are exposed and that is very, very easy to forget. So make sure if you're doing the same, even though you've got longer trousers on, that if you've got deck shoes on to spray your ankles, as you'll get home, you'll be in absolute agony. It's silly how easy it is to forget. 
just any, anything that's exposed spray it up because when you're on the water with the sun beating down you are cooking mate you may as well be sitting on tin foil covered in mazola oil I feel a pint coming on this afternoon not had a pint since bank holiday monday I had a couple one of my sons who was down from yorkshire and the rest of the week i've been sorting things out for work next week so i feel a nice pint my local village pub the jolly miller there you are i mate spud the publican and craig the manager i just advertised your pub you just got a shout out <laughs> i'll have a free pint for that My channel's been running for approximately, I started it in 219 under the name Dave on the Paddle and I was uploading some kayak videos then but uh, I didn't get many hits then I started getting back into other old interests from my youth like the walking, hiking, camping, things like that so obviously I changed, well obviously I needed to change the name to reflect the fact that I do more than one activity but uh, it never really got a lot of hits in the first year and um, not a lot of subscribers and then when I did change the name within a year even though we were in lockdown I thought I eventually hit the 100 now I'm cruising away past the 500 with uh, I believe 102 videos uploaded which is a uh, yeah fair amount I know there's big youtubers out there with thousands of videos and knocking two videos out a week but uh, that's not me I do like I don't video everything I do some days I just go out and I may even take all the camera equipment with me and I just go do you know what I don't want to do it I just want to go out paddle just look around and I'm walking just look around whatever I'm doing even camping just absolute privacy because you have to work to the camera you know and obviously if you produce it in a decent way it doesn't look like work that's the idea of it but uh, people can then sort of join you and relax but um, I am very very pleased how the channel is done I'm certainly not after making money out of it so um yes to get over the 500 i think i'm about 529 530 i'm very very pleased with that indeed so uh thank you if you have subscribed and thank you for your continued support it's very much appreciated obviously if you haven't subscribed and you've been watching my videos or seen this and uh want to keep a tail on what i'm up to then please subscribe chatting away like a loon in I just missed the first of those tributaries the one where I, I met the kayak and discussed so I'm going to go down a little bit I might bottle it but we'll see I've attempted it before and I was thinking about this one when I come out but the last time I literally got to where that rickety bridge is and there was a huge tree already down I could literally hear creaking and I thought no 16 foot kayak and the actual river at this point is narrower than that kayak so that weren't going to happen there's a mooring on the right and a gate i don't know whether that's private it looks a lot less clogged up than the last time i was here I'm trying to come down it quite an old bridge well there's the tree collapsing in front as you can probably see I may stop and have a coffee while I'm down here get in the shade because it's getting very warm 
and obviously keep an eye on the depth because I don't want to bottom out. No, it's as far as I'm going. There's, there's trees down all over the place. Shame. Let's get backwards a bit. It's, uh, it's, it's a shame. Ah, uh, stuck my nose in and I've lost my bowl. That's it. Now we try the one further down. At least I stuck my nose in. I really fancy a coffee, so I might just pull in somewhere in a minute. Right, just taking a break. And I move my bump. Ah, that's it. Ah. Right, for all you people that are interested in the uh, drop stitch kayaks or hybrids like this one is, um, this is about, I think it's the fourth time I've been out in the story. Ranger 1. As I said, I've got my 473 centimetre or 475 centimetre full drop stitch kayak um, and this. I've sold all the others now. So far, I am very, very pleased with it. it it's faster than my Itwit 3 that I sold. Uh, saying that, the Itwit 3 was probably about two foot, about 60 centimeters longer. Larger side chambers, it, it's it's a good tank. Um, what do I feel about this? I enjoy it. It's nice for these short, sort of shorter paddles. Um, I, I'm confident with it, the base is fantastic. Side chambers are nice and solid. I don't know how it would hold up to branches or sharp objects. I've not really hit nothing in this yet. So I, I can't comment on that. But uh, all in all, for, for the money I paid, it's an uh, excellent product. Glides quite well. No tracks, I mean, it's straight line. Um, it's a completely different kayak to my other one, but it's fun. It's very lightweight. So all in all, I'm very, very pleased that I bought it. If I start doing, if I'm doing an overnighter or something like that, very much doubt I'll be taking this out. It depends. If it's a summer night and I haven't got to carry a lot of, lot of kit, so I've got like one man backpacking tent or something, I could probably get away with this. But other than that, for the space and the weight capacity, I'll probably have to revert back to my um, Blue Wave glider. But uh, all in all, yeah, I'm very pleased with it. It's quite comfortable, although I cheat. I think I've, I've said on other videos, if you haven't seen them before, what I do, I've got a gel pad underneath the kayak seat. So it sort of uh, takes that edge off of the, uh, the hardness of just sort of being in one position. Because remember a drop stitch floor, you know, the, at the moment I said I've got this pumped up to eight PSI and go up to 10. It is basically like sitting in a solid uh, hard shell kayak on a proper kayak seat so after a while your backside's going to go numb but the gel pad definitely helps out with that so yeah a good purchase I love it when I get tree cover tree cover just a slight breeze and then back out into the uh baking hot sun. the other tributary. I struggle saying that word. Oh I see it seems that the path that follows the river bends round there. Just 
wiping midges off my arm. No, I'm not going very far down there, am I? Never mind. I don't think I've ever recorded one of my kayak camping trips as yet. I think I've always kept them a little bit. To me. I've kept them private, just gone out and done them. But uh, obviously now I will be slightly limited in my time to record. I'm hoping to change that and actually get some of them recorded. One of the downsides to kayak camping at this time of year, right up to best part of late September, is um, where there's water, there's always mozzies. Mozzies, midges, call them what you like, the little buggers bite. So um, there is a downside to kayak camping in the summer. If you get to a certain time of evening, you feel like you've got to dive into your tent, where you've got your inner tent mozzie net. Yeah, we're everywhere at the moment. Look, they're all flying at me. I think I've just eaten one. Yeah, oh, they bite me, I bite them. Oh, the mozzies are everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. I'm literally just flying through thick clouds of them. Well, as you can see, I'm now back up to the uh, Iron Railway Bridge where when we came clockwise we fought left so now what I'm doing I'm going left and I'm continuing on the circular paddle around uh, Tunbridge Sports Ground avoiding being shit on by pigeons ooh, 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 ooh. that's lucky I got away with it again Back in the shade. Just me life jacket. Take a swig of water while I'm under tree cover. Not too far to go now, probably about. 10 minutes and then I'm uh, stopping off at the Tunbridge Slipway so you'll see that on the uh, video if you're thinking about putting in there I would not suggest putting in a town lock it's very very awkward to park and it's a, it's a fair walk uh, to be honest in the past I've done an awful lot of work in Tunbridge Tunbridge Wells and Tunbridge well any, everywhere in Kent but so I do know the nooks and crannies where I can sort of get away with uh, parking, but uh, I wouldn't suggest it. The other thing with Tunbridge Town Lock is, it should go without saying, if you're portaging, either way, up or downstream, make sure you keep your valuables on you. It's not, um, you should do anyway, you, you shouldn't leave your valuables behind, even if you're transporting your kayak and going back for your paddle, and other things less important bags make sure you've got your money your keys and all that on you as you can see it's quite narrow on this section and now you've got the uh, sports ground race course on the right hand side I said the banks are quite high but if you were, were in the water you could get out there's not actual uh, brambles or sort of nettles there and always plenty of people about the path is just the other side of the uh, bank
Yeah, as I was saying earlier about Tunbridge Town Lock, I've been there in all sorts of weathers and loads of times in the past and it is not the prettiest lock, it's not the best place in the world. I've uh, literally approached that river and it's quite wide at that point. I've literally been overcome with the fumes of uh, spliff. Uh, loud banging music, there's been teenagers hanging around um, doing the gas canisters in balloons. And so, as I said, you've just got to be really, really careful. Make sure all your most valued bits just basically stay on your back in a dry bag as you're transporting stuff. If necessary, just do it in stages. Once you get past that, you're in the countryside, so you can do it at a sort of a more leisurely pace. Okay, before I reach the slipway, and obviously that will come into view so you can sort of see it, uh, just give you a little bit of information. The slipway is located at the far end of Tunbridge Castle Lower Car Park. Um, as you're coming into it, it basically says swimming pool and car park, so that sort of guides you down to that particular car park. The fees from memory is five thirty for six hours, five pound thirty for six hours and 670 for 24 hours obviously there's there's lesser fees but you don't want to really get caught out you can pay by app so uh you can download the app and whatever and that's what i would intend to do if i was going out on a saturday because it's free on a sunday i would generally get out on the water before i could use the meter and then pay on the app on route so i'll cover myself for the 23 hours have an overnight stop and then come back on the day when parking's free and uh, load up from there and you know, get out from there. So there's just a little bit of information on the where to park and where to launch. It's not too far to the slip now, so what I'll do, I'll do my closing speech. I don't want to do that when I get to back to town lock and I think even the slipway there probably be quite a few people putting in at this time of day so it interferes with my recording so um, anyway so I hope you've enjoyed this video found it relaxing as I said there will be plenty more to come they'll just be a little bit better planned than I've had to do in the past although you wouldn't really notice that I just sort of get up and go now I'll have to plan my days out a bit more that's my problem so if you have enjoyed the video, please uh, hit the thumbs up button. And uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel. Right, that's it. I'm just going to turn the camera around, probably set it to a bit of music, get out of the slip, have some uh, lunch before the last half mile back down to Tunbridge Lock. Bye for now.